Hello and welcome to another episode of Game Hammer. It's the final episode of the year, so we have to do our traditional thing. We have to look back on one year from the past and decide which game from that year was Game of the Year. Now, the rules for this are simple. I go through the top three home computer systems that were out in the UK at the time, and from those three, I select one of the magazines about that machine. Usually the leading magazine, the one that people in the UK would agree, yes, that was the magazine for that system. I then look at the charts for that magazine for the year in question. This year, it's 1987, and I find which games topped the charts. Tally all those games up. And any that have two or more, not necessarily consecutive, but two or more times that they got to the top of the charts, they get into round one of this contest. So this year we have the Amstrad, the Spectrum and the Commodore. We take those and any games that got to the top of the charts two or more times in 1987 for those computers, they go into round one. For round one, I will then pit all of the games for each system against one another. So the Amstrad games are against the Amstrad games. Spectrum games against Spectrum. Commodore's games against Commodore. One of those games for each system will be the game for that system to go through to round two. I'll pick the best of those ones. Then in round two, I pit those final three games against one another. One of those is going to come in first place out of all three of those. And that will be game of the year for 1987. So we're going to do this alphabetically in terms of computer, so that means we're starting with the Amstrad CPC. Let's see what Old Arnold has to offer. Amstrad Action is the premier magazine for the Amstrad CPC, but in 1987 Amstrad Action still didn't have a monthly chart, so we're going to have to go with a different magazine, and I've chosen for this year Amstrad Computer User, the official magazine but it's carrying the Gallup charts, so the charts are independent. And as a result, we get some accurate gaming charts for what was big and what was selling well on the Amstrad in 1987. So in January, we had an interesting one. It's Compilation Hits Volume 3 by Beaujolais. Or is that Beaujolais? I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's Beaujolais. And uh, after that, we got Trivial Pursuit, which... If we hadn't included the Compilation Hits Volume 3, because it's a compilation rather than a standard actual computer game, we would have had the second month in a row for Trivial Pursuit. But we do include Compilation Hits because we take whatever's at the top spot. Next up, for March and April, we have Gauntlet by US Gold. But it was then knocked off the top spot by Ninja from Mastertronic, which was then knocked off the top spot by another compilation, Big Four from Jarell. That was then subsequently knocked off the top by BMX Simulator from Codemasters, followed by Grand Prix Simulator by Codemasters, and then Ghost Hunters by Codemasters, before BMX Simulator by Codemasters knocked it back off the top. After that, we got an entry from Paperboy by Elite, followed by Cricket International from Addictive. Wow, it was certainly a good year for Codemasters, wasn't it? They got the number one spot four months in a row. Gauntlet and BMX Simulator are the only ones that got two number one spots, however, so they go forward into the contest. I have to admit, I wasn't expecting BMX Simulator to be as good as it was. I often overlook the Simulator series from Codemasters because they never felt like they played all too well back in the 80s, when the Amstrad was my day-to-day -day system. But coming back to play it now, it's actually quite a lot of fun. At its core, it's a simple one-screen game with a lot of colours and a decent soundtrack, which is exactly the kind of game that the Amstrad CPC handles very well. The controls are decent enough, although they will take a little getting used to on the corners, because, wow, your bike really can move quickly. The computer-controlled opponents will be far more skilled than you, unless you put in a lot of effort to get good, but I think this is one game which will actually reward the practice you end up putting into it, because the courses are fun and the game is a decent single-player experience, even if it's really geared up to be a two-player game. 
The Amstrad often got the short end of the stick when it came to big name ports of games, because we would often be handed a hastily converted copy of a Spectrum game. If we were lucky, it would be a hastily coloured port of a Spectrum game, but that's not the case with US Gold's port of Gauntlet. This is a colourful, well-coded game with smooth scrolling, great graphics, decent sound and excellent gameplay. The CPC really did get a good game with this one. It slows down here and there when there's a lot going on, but to be honest with you, every Amstrad owner has become used to that over the years because, well, that's just what happens when your computer's clocked at 4 MHz. As arcade game ports go, however, Gauntlet captures all the fun and all the cool visuals of the original, and it's a must-play for action arcade fans. So this ended up being a more difficult decision than I expected. Although we do only have two games to choose from on the PC, they were both excellent in their own ways. In the end though, I think the variety of level design on offering Gauntlet wins out, even though the gameplay loop on offer in that arcade port is just as limited as the gameplay loop in the BMX simulator. Variety is the spice of life, so a variety of level designs really does mean that spicy old Gauntlet makes it through to round two. For the Commodore 64, we're going with the charts from the Premier C64 magazine for the UK, which is Zap64. Now, in January and February, the top of the charts was dominated by Leaderboard Golf from Access Software. But from March all the way to November, it was World Games from Epix that took the top spot, leaving only one space on the charts, which was Last Ninja from System 3 in December. I have to ask, what is it with C64 owners and sports games back in the 80s? World Games absolutely dominates this year, and its only competitor is Leaderboard Golf. There are no other games, apart from one right at the end of the year, that even got close to the top. It's ridiculous. If you were a sports fan who didn't want to go out and actually do some sports back in 1987, it seems the Commodore 64 was the computer for you. Anyway, Leaderboard Golf and World Games now have to compete with one another to see who goes through to the next round. Leaderboard Golf is one of the best golf games that you can play on an 8-bit system. It's just great. I was rather partial to Lynx Golf on the PC back in the 90s, and Leaderboard's style makes me think Lynx took a fair bit of inspiration from it, let's put it that way. The controls are so easy to learn, and the player isn't inundated with too much information on the screen at once, so the actual game of golf is front and centre, which is just how I like it. The courses are interesting to play, the graphics are decent enough, although nothing mind-blowing, and it's just very fun for a game of golf. If you enjoy old golf games, this is definitely one to pick up. World Games, on the other hand, is yet another in a long line of joystick-breaking waggle-a-thons that has no reason to be played today. The skill in these games basically comes down to who can move the joystick backward and forward at the correct rhythm to please the computer. It's a terrible game with no replay value outside of nostalgia. If you want to play a sports game, play a modern one because they at least try to replicate the sport they're on about. This is not a good game. So the decision is clear when it comes to the Commodore 64. Leaderboard Golf takes an easy win and goes through to round two. For the ZX Spectrum, we're going with Crash. It's still the premier ZX Spectrum magazine, so it gets to present the chart. In January, the top spot was taken by Ghosts and Goblins from Elite. Then Paperboy tops it for February and March, which means Paperboy from Elite is in our contest. After that, the year is dominated by US Gold's release of Gauntlet. It goes from April all the way up to November, which means that unless Ghosts and Goblins comes back in December at the top of the charts, we're only going to have two from the Spectrum to contend with this year. But Ghosts and Goblins doesn't manage it. Enduro Racer takes the top spot for December, which means Gauntlet and Paperboy are competing with one another to see who goes through to round two. Paperboy is one of the best games I've ever played on a Spectrum. While the graphics are a little monochrome here and there, and the sound isn't all that fantastic, although what is here is pretty good, it's just not brilliant, the gameplay of the arcade original is present and correct. It's smooth, it's very responsive, and the game is just as addictive now as it ever was. This was a favourite as a child when I played it on my cousin's rubber key Spectrum, and it's still a favourite now. Gauntlet, on the other hand, will not win the Spectrum any awards for best graphics, but what's on display is definitely workable. 
The colours are used effectively so the enemies stand out from the items to pick up, which makes it very easy to play the game. And the controls are fluid. They're highly responsive, which you need for a fast-paced game like this, and it all felt just so easy to play. It was great. There are very few sounds, but then again, the original game wasn't exactly the most intensive on the audios, although it would have been nice to have some of the uh, digitized sound if it was possible, just to make it a more authentic port of the arcade game. But what sounds are here, and a little bit of music too, is done well with the Specky's beeper, and all in all, the game is excellent. I definitely recommend it. But the question has to be, which of these two amazing arcade games gets to go through to round two? Well, it has been a tough choice this year for the Spectrum, but my vote has to go with Paperboy. It's simply the best you can make an arcade port on the Spectrum, and it hammers home the win. So, at the end of round one, we now have three games to pit against one another in round two. For the ZX Spectrum, we have Paperboy. For the Commodore 64, we have Leaderboard Golf. And for the Amstrad CPC, we have Gauntlet. Now, this is actually going to be quite a difficult decision because these three games are great. They're all Stone Cold classics. They represent some of the best games on each system and also some of the best games just overall. So I've got to now pit these against one another and find out which one gets Game of the Year, which one gets the silver, and which one gets the bronze. It's going to be a tough decision. So let's have a quick look at those games again while I decide how we're going to do this. Paperboy for the ZX Spectrum brings fun, fast-paced arcade action to the mix. The graphics aren't the best, and the sound is almost entirely absent, but the game, that's a lot of fun. It has a huge amount of replay value, and it's a great experience. Leaderboard Golf on the Commodore 64 is one of the best golf games that you can play, and it's just as much fun now as it was back when it was released. It's a game that really has stood the test of time. Gauntlet is a wonderful looking arcade action game with a wide variety of levels on offer and branching paths that you can take through those levels, which gives it a lot of replay value. It's a standout classic arcade port for the Amstrad CPC. OK, let's do this. Let's put these games into order. It's been a hard decision, and if I'm absolutely honest with you, I'd give them all first place, if I could, but that's not what the rules are here. Only one can win. So here we go. In third place, it's Leaderboard Golf on the Commodore 64. In second place, it's Gauntlet on the Amstrad CPC, which means in first place we have Paperboy on the ZX Spectrum. So there you are. The Game Hammer Game of the Year for 1987 is Paperboy on the ZX Spectrum. This was a tough decision. Like I said, if I could have, I would have awarded all three of these games the top spot. They would have all been Game of the Year. But that's not the rules. One of them has to be Game of the Year. So I had to pick out of quite delicate, minute details in order to separate these games. That's how good and how classic all three of these are. But I think I made the right decision. Do you think I made the right decision? That is the question. Do tell me in the comments if I've made a good choice there, or if you'd have gone for one of the others, or if you actually have a completely different top 5, 10, whatever. Let me know in the comments, because it's always worth finding fun new games, and we can all have a, a good time doing that. But, speaking of good times, that's all we've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed this, and if you have, remember to click that like button, share it with your friends so that they'll know some good games when they see them. And do subscribe for future videos because there'll be more in the future. But until next time, I've been Zoe Kirk Robinson. You've been watching Game Hammer Classic Gaming, Game of the Year for 1987. Happy New Year. See you later. If you like the show, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It really does help create future videos. That's patreon.com slash Zoe Kirk Robinson. And I've got an extra special thanks going out to Chief89, Sam Yates, Retro Mickey82, Mo Henry, and George Botterini. Thank you so much, guys.